Good song book. Morning, everybody. How are we? Well, it's Sunday morning if you hadn't gathered already. It's sunny. It's still cold, but it's sunny. It was, uh, I don't know whether we live in Adelaide or Melbourne, you know, one day it's rainy, next day it's sunny. Who knows? Who knows? But it is good to be here. I hope you are all well. I know there's a few uh, illnesses, a few sore throats, a few uh, sniffles. Um, just always remember, look after yourself, take care of others and hydrate because um, we don't want you to get unwell. This morning, we are delving back into our doctrines. And if you remembered a little while ago, I can't remember when we did our last one, beginning of the year, beginning of the year. Does anyone know what doctrine we're up to? <laughs> That's really unfair. Really unfair. Does anyone know what doctrine that is? Nine. Well, you know, you wrote it down on the preaching roster. It's cheating. So much cheating going. Wrong way, go back. Stop cheating. So as we unpack it, it's about understanding as the Salvation Army what it is we do and why we do what we do. And we have these, how many? Eleven. Well, it's not very positive, was it? We have eleven that just kind of shape our sort of foundations about what we do and why we do it. And um, I think, when was the last time someone did a... Well, who's the oldest person who did a soldiership class? Be a little scary? I don't know. I didn't know. I'm not the, definitely not the oldest doing that one. But sometimes we kind of do them and then we kind of... They're up on our wall in our boardroom. Probably should find another home for them somewhere else. One in the band room. Um, we kind of... What are they? We do them sometimes. They're on the back of our songbooks. Who's got a songbook in front of them? That's the problem. We don't have it very often. So we thought it would be a good idea just to unpack them slowly again over a long time. We didn't want to do a whole 11 weeks because, who knows, by week four you might be sleepy. Um, but spread it out over time just so you know what we do, why we do it, and the reasons why and behind it. So Erica is uh, speaking for us today and she's going to crack open Doctrine 9 for us. And the idea is uh, trusting and obeying God living and living with God and knowing that he's got it all under control. So this morning, I'll start with a call to worship that says this. We see light, hope and joy. We bring heart, soul, mind and body. We share blessings and fears. We bring faith and doubt. With all that, we are and all we have, let us Worship God. And we always acknowledge that we are standing on traditional land of the Ghana people. And we acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging. And remind ourselves as the Salvation Army and we as members of the Salvation Army that we are committed to reconciliation at every possible moment. And we do all this with the trust and the obedience with God. I was trying to think about a good way to start off uh, a song to encourage us what it means and to have these doctrines, to be shaped in what it is. And the song of God is, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. It comes with so much power to know that we have the Son of God walking with us and he is our rock. And we stand firmly upon that. So I invite you to stand as we sing this song straight through, please, band.
If you come and everything's just a little bit shaky, today you'll find yourself on Christ's solid ground, knowing that in everything we have him to trust in and to lean on. Please take your seats as Belinda's going to come and share the good news. Good morning, Ingle Farm. I can't really do a Greg, now can I? But I do need to say hallelujah. I want to give praise and glory to God for the opportunity and the privilege to be standing here in front of you today. I have some announcements to share with you. Um, All right, so we'll start off with some good news, won't we? It is lovely to see Addie. Where's Addie? Where's she? She was here a minute ago. Oh, she's up the front, back there. We haven't seen Addie for a few months, so it's lovely to see you here back with Nana and Pa now that they're back from their gallivanting around. That's lovely. Now, Val and Rob have brought their granddaughter Ella with them today, and it's beautiful to welcome you here. Thank you for coming. Um, it's nice to see a tall gentleman back from his sojourn to Melbourne. Reese, lovely to have you back. Awesome. Um, oh, well, that's a bit more enthusiastic than that. Come on. Hey, hey, there we go. <laughs> Now, so this, it's, it's a bit bittersweet because he did such a great job doing his training in Melbourne that he's actually scored himself a job back in Melbourne. And so he's going to be uh, heading off, I believe, in the next few weeks, leaving home. And so, and Eric is saying one week. Pete had no idea when it was. He said sometime before the end of the month, he says which is probably one week if you count it, so there you go. So um, make sure you, uh, you uh, speak to Reese while he's here and we'll, we'll be delighted any time you can come back and join us and uh, that will be fabulous. And also in the Jones family, another member of their family was awarded the Best and Fairest Award for her netball efforts this season. Well done, Mads. So that's lovely. All right, this month... We are collecting tin spaghetti or pasta with sauce meals that look like that, all right? Do not give us baked beans, please. Not because we don't like them, but because we have many, many, many beans. Many, many, many beans. So we'll be right not to have any more beans for a little while. Um, Okay. On Monday, we were informed that um, our our dear friend Meryl Turner was promoted to glory. And she's been struggling with her health for many, many years as well. Um, And so we've been advised that her funeral will be held here on Tuesday the 19th of September. I keep going to say February. I don't know why. It's just... Anyway, so not this Tuesday next Tuesday here at 10 o'clock. If you're interested, there is actually, um, because Meryl was an officer, there's a a promoted to glory notice and we've popped that on the notice board if you would like to look at that. Also on the notice board, if you'd like to have a look, is um, the latest copy of the Senior Leadership Team Minutes. And on Thursday, it was um, the Field Changes Appointment Bulletin was released for the Salvation Army in Australia. Now, I'm not going to put whether or not you're going to be happy or sad about this, but uh, Major Peter and myself are still going to be here for 2024 leading Ingle Farm Corps. If you'd like to find out who else is uh, caught up with field change, then read the bulletin on the notice board. Young Dorothy is celebrating her birthday in the start of October and she wants as many people as, as here to come. If you would like to come to Dorothy's birthday, that's all fine and good. But Hugh is asking if you could just give him a quick call to let him know so that they make sure that everyone has enough food. All right? Does that sound like a plan? Excellent. Now, two more things. Saturday is coming up, as it does most weeks. But on Saturday, the 16th of September, we have a variety of things to choose to attend. All right? So, first thing is, let's see... You could start off the day at the Teddy Bears Picnic at Unley, uh, Unity Park, which is being run by Communities for Children. That starts at 11. You can then go to the free barbecue at the Parafield Gardens. Um, they're doing a Salvo sleep out. Or is that lunchtime or is that 
That's dinner. Oh, sorry. Before you go there for your sausage sizzle, sorry, you can go to the bands in the round at Arndale between 2 and 4.30 because the best band in South Australia is going to be playing there as in our band is going to be part of there, as well as um, the Just Brass kids are going to be there and they're going to have um, a Just Brass uh, involvement as well. So that'll be pretty cool. The tickets cost $15 and included in that is afternoon tea and they would like you to pre-book if you can so that way, again, they can make sure there's enough food to go around. So there is a try booking link, there is a QR code. If all of that escapes you and you're feeling a little bit technologically challenged, you can pop in here during the week and speak to Nat and she will do it for you and order your ticket for you. She won't pay for it for you, you have to pay for it yourself, but she will do the process for you. Okay, got that? All right, so we've got the morning covered with the teddy bears picnic, we've got the afternoon covered with bands in the round, and then the evening is covered by popping out to the free community barbecue at Parafield Gardens. Clear as mud? Clear as mud. All right. Last thing. Super excited. We have the opportunity to send some of our kids to Boost Camp this year. And so we're going to be sending a number of kids across to uh, camp. It's for... Um, Grades three to six, I think, yes. Uh, but it costs $160 per child. And so you can imagine that's a bit of a hefty price. So if you have a few dollars that you would like to donate to help sponsor some of our kids to go to Boost Camp, then we would be grateful to receive that. You can either pop it in an envelope from home and write the word camp on it and pop it in our offering bag next week. If you're desperate because you've got money burning a hole in your pocket and you want to donate today... Robin is happy to have a bag so you can just pop some money in for that or you can pop in during the week and say to Nat, I want to donate to help sponsor for the kids for Boost Camp, okay? So um, that's pretty exciting. We're sending three little people and one junior leader, which is really exciting to go to Boost Camp this year because this year. it's more than what we've done for the last couple of years, which is fabulous. All right, well enough from me. Um, Ah, time for the kids. Awesome. Good morning. Could I have the children come and join me, please? I might get you to come and sit sit in this, this row of chairs here. See if I've got enough. I haven't got enough chairs. Ooh, isn't that a good problem? Grab a seat or grab the floor. What have we got? Yeah, have we got enough. There you go. Everyone's here. It was lovely to see you today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Excellent. I've got a mask for each of you to wear. So pretty much I want to blindfold you so you can't see. It will all be clear very soon. So, try and put this on. Yeah, the, if it's too baggy, um, the, it's got a velcro thing at the back, okay? This one's got a thing. If you can't do it, just let me know and I'll help you. So, you want to put it on and make sure you can't see. So, maybe Amelia, if you're happy, you could take your glasses off because you're not going to be able to see anyway. <laughs> And maybe Major Belinda will look after your glasses for you. Can you not see? Maddie can. <laughs> You're right there? It's the other way. The other way. And you've made it yeah, way too tight. Oh, can you? No, you can't. You can pull that. So, oh dear. Technical, technically challenged. It's not that technical even, is it? Yes. Belinda, yeah. Good on you. Thank you. So, every... Oh, no. Bex can still see. Addie can see. Pull them down. So, you can't see. Excellent. So, I want you to trust me. Do you think you can trust me? Yeah. So can you all stand up, please? 
So you can't see. All stand up. Malachi's having trouble standing up. Okay, if you know which one's your left hand, turn to the left. Wrong way, Amelia, other left. <laughs> Excellent. Take one step forward. Woo. You might need to put your hands out because you're all close together so you'll feel each other. So a little bit, you, 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 you turn to the left this way and then feel. Yeah, and you... Okay, can we now turn to the right? So that will be the other way. Excellent. One foot forward. Oops, on top of each other. Okay, turn back to face my voice. Can you tell which way that is? No, a little bit this way. Malachi, this way. No, not that way. Turn around. Excellent. Okay. This, this way. Two steps forward for me. Woo! Uh, can you bob down to the ground? That's kind of easy, isn't it? What can you feel? Oh, carpet. All right, Amelia, can you stand up? Just Amelia, stand up, turn around. Just turn around. Yeah, walk forward. And somebody that you know and love is going to catch you. So keep walking. Steve, keep paying attention. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Very good catch. Can you turn her around and send her back to me? Excellent. So it's scary when you can't see, isn't it? Okay, so everyone's going to stand up. Okay. If you know, if you still know which way the congregation is, I want you to turn to face the congregation. What's the congregation? The people. All the people. <laughs> That's not the people, Malachi, that way. Yeah, excellent. Walk towards the people very carefully because you're going to run into the chairs. Very carefully. Walk toward the people. Find a chair. Or if you were on the floor, you need to be back on the floor. Okay. So... Yep, keep, keep coming. Right, oh, yep, now it's behind you. Oh, well done. Excellent. If, if you want to see, you can see or you can just keep your eyes shut. That's fine. So today we're going to think about a word called faith. Does anyone know what faith is? Another word for faith, maybe? Hope. Mm, maybe you do hope when you have faith trust trust is a good word if if faith is too hard so today we're talking about faith in God and I heard this great way to explain it this week it says not having or not being able to see like you were just before but trusting the one who can so not being able to see but trusting the one who can. So some of you trusted me and did what I said and I didn't hurt you. So who can you trust to forgive your sins, make you right with God so that you can go to heaven? Put your hand up if you know. Who you can trust or believe in so that you can be saved and go to heaven. Caden knows. Does anyone else know? Beck and Chloe know, Maddie knows. Okay, yell it out. Who can we trust? Jesus. Jesus, that's right. So Jesus died for us. Jesus rose again and now he lives so that we can know God. So when we can't see, we have somebody who can see that we can trust in. But how do we hear God's voice? It was easy to hear my voice, wasn't it? I've got a microphone. How do we hear Jesus' voice? Any ideas, Caden? By praying to him. So that's just talking to him. Anywhere, anytime you can talk to Jesus and he'll hear you. How else can we know what God wants us to do, where he wants us to go? We can pray, definitely. What else? 
Yeah, that's the praying. You were asking to help us. We can read something. Those who are looking can see it. Or Caden knew without looking. Or did you cheat? <laughs> if you read your Bible or get somebody to read it to you, you learn all about God, who he is, what he's like, and what he wants you to do. So this is our best way to know what God wants us to do is to read his word and then talk to him about it. Okay? And you'll hear his voice. It might not be like my voice, but you'll know. You'll just know. So coming to church is a good way to know what God wants of you as well. Okay? Talking to your mum or dad or somebody else who knows God is a good way. Okay? So there's lots and lots of ways that we can find out about Jesus and learn how to follow him. So if we believe in Jesus, okay, and we trust him, he'll always guide us and always help us, and then we get to go to heaven with him. So if you all close your eyes, those that are looking at me, and we're going to pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you love us, that you died to save us. Thank you that you live and that you can lead us and help us today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you can see. You can see the way through all the difficulty, all the hardships of life. Thank you that you can see and you can guide us. So please help us to trust you, to pray, to read your word, to come to church so that we can always follow you and live abundantly, live well, live, live in a good way and honour you. So thank you that you have sight that you give to us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me. You can take your mask off. I'll have it back and I'll swap it for a frog. Mask for a frog. Yeah, take it off, buddy, so you don't hurt yourself because I'm not looking at you now. One for you. No? One for you. You could give it to someone else. Thank you. Thank you, Caden. Thank you. Thanks, Amelia. Well done. Thanks for trusting me.
all good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. So thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for all his love. Lord, we come in love to you this morning. With our gifts that we've brought before you, we would ask that you would use those gifts that you have um, graciously bestowed on us so that we can impart them to others. Lord, we ask that the gifts that we presented today may be used in a way to draw people to you, to know you, to love you, to know that, to get them to know that you love them. So Lord, we just ask that as we continue meeting this way this morning that you would um, honour what we've done this morning. In and through your name we ask. Amen.
Good morning. Can we read the Bible reading together? John 15, verses 1 to 5. It comes from the New International Version, the vine and the branches. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears fruit, no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Amen. Alrighty, we're going to sing again before Erica comes and shares with us and gives us a little more insight into our doctrine and into our scripture reading today. This is a song which... Uh, you'll be singing for the next 15 months, guaranteed, because it always gets stuck in my head every time I sing it. But when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will and abides with us still, and with all who trust and obey. It's a song just to remind us that as the vine with Jesus, as we remain with him, we can achieve great things. And without, we may not be achieve greatness for long because we find ourselves withering away. But in him, we find ourselves always energised and full with his life. If we can sing verses one and two first, please band and let everyone stand. Would someone like to read out verse 3 for me? But we are blessed. And as we shared earlier, that the blessing of Christ in that space, the trusting in that, as we saw in the children's story, that we are blessed people because of that. And it takes a little bit of trust and sometimes some blind trust and, having, and being able to hear the voice of Jesus for us to be able to live in the way he wants us to, for us to find all our blessings. Let us sing verses 4 and 5. Please, band.
never feeling, fearing, only trusting and obeying. It's a huge ask and a huge task. But when we come to know him more, we end up knowing that his trust is something we can truly lean on. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, we can put all our trust in you and we can lean on you. We can look to you when we are fearful, when we are lost, when we're grieving, whether we're heavy burdened, whether we have a frown and our day is not going quite well. We can lean on you and you are always there. Lord, thank you that you are Lord that we can trust that we are blessed when we obey and listen and do what is asked of us. Lord, we thank you that you are always there, never-ending, always available. Lord, as your servant comes and shares what has been put on her heart today, as we look into what it is to be here as the Salvation Army, allow what is to be said to only truly encourage us to be further in you and to trust you more and more each day. We pray in his name. Amen. Nineteen ninety five. About twenty eight years ago, just for a minute, I want you to try and pinpoint who, where, what you were in nineteen ninety five. Can you believe that was like nearly thirty years ago? Frightening. <clears throat> well, in 1995, um, Peter and I were dating and I felt like I had won the biggest prize in the world. I was going for my driver's licence. <laughs> it wasn't Peter. Um, I was going for my driver's licence and my sister came home and there's quite an age gap between my sister and I and she declared to me that she was giving me her car. Oh, all right. Her car looked a little like that. This is not it, but it was a, I want to get it right, it was a Tirana Sunbird. It was awesome. It had some very cool features. I want to direct you to the first feature. It had what I like to call reverse sunroof. Do you want to know what that is? The floor in the passenger side and the floor in the driver's side had rusted through. So you could see the road as you drove along. Awesome. It's very cool. You had a choice. Watch the road or pretend to be the Flintstones. The second feature was it had an interactive model, or mode, I guess is probably better. It had an interactive mode. Sometimes, when I got in and turned the key, it wouldn't start. I had to get out of the car, pop the, bo- well, pop the bonnet, then get out of the car, because, you know, it doesn't work the other way. Pop the bonnet, and then I would reach down the channel. You know how there's, like, the channel once you pop the bonnet on the side? And pull out a really big screwdriver. I would hit the starter motor three times, Slide the screwdriver back, shut it, get in, and it would start. This car was amazing. It didn't look quite like that. I would like to know if anyone here has ever won a car. Has anyone won a car? You have? We'll talk about that later. Other than my sister giving me this... uh, car, loosely now I think maybe not such a car, Um, I've never won a car. I've entered a few competitions but I've never won a car. Who has heard of those competitions where you are asked to put your hand on the car and the person who's left holding the car wins the car? Yep, I've never seen one, I don't even know if we really do it in Australia so much but It looks a bit like this. This is in Taiwan. Um, And then you get a number and you put your hand on the car. And I've seen it in lots of TV shows. I don't know if you have. Where it usually goes badly because someone drinks too much water. And then they (laughs) 
can't hold the car or they get cramps or they get tired and their hands start to slip and um, yeah I wouldn't be very good at this competition I don't think where would you put your hand if you had a chance to win the car by holding onto it on the tire would you for grip, you reckon? Oh, so you could sit on the floor? I reckon there'd have to be some form of strategy involved. If you don't keep your hand on the car, what happens? You're out. Competition over, the chance to the win is done. I would like you to have this image of this car competition in your head for just a minute. Where would you put your hand? What would happen if this competition occurred and you could take your hand off the car whenever you wanted? It wouldn't work, would it? It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a competition because you, I don't know what you do. It's a crazy idea, it wouldn't work. The word here is continued. Stay connected, stay in touch. And this is the word I wanna focus on today. Today we are looking at Doctrine 9. And I would like you to read it with me. We believe that continuance in a state of salvation depends upon continued faith, obedient faith in Christ. It's always good when the person up the front can't even say it right. Upon continued obedient faith in Christ. Why is this important? The doctrines are made up of 11. There are 11 doctrines and that underpin the foundations of our faith community, of our belief system. Why did this one make the grade? That continuance in a state of salvation depends upon continued obedient faith in Christ. Well, the problem with Doctrine 9 is that it actually is aiming to address a particular theory that comes up in our faith, something that we choose not to underpin our faith. But then in addressing that, it opens up something else. Now, I know I sound like I'm talking in riddles and I'm going to explain that a bit more. There is a problem with the concept that once you make a decision to believe in God, then you can go ahead and do whatever you want. That's a problem. That would be like putting your hand on the car and knowing that at any time if you take your hand off the car, it really doesn't matter because you're still in a chance to win the car. Doesn't, doesn't gel right, does it? And that's what Dr. Nine is addressing. It's saying, actually, you can't just say, yes, I believe in God, and then do and be whatever you want to be on any, on any other day. It doesn't work that way. However, where it gets a bit messy is that unlike the car competition, grace is involved. That when you take your hand off for just a minute, you're not out of the competition. You're not out of the race. God has given you the grace to continue on. The word that covers this is the word depends. You can win the car dependent on the fact that you do not let go of the car. Salvation is dependent on the fact that you choose to not let go of obedient faith. The problem with this is the role of grace and the role of choice. Obedience to God is our choice. We need to choose to continue to trust and obey God throughout our life. We need to guard and nurture our relationship with God. However, that is easier said than done. Because unlike the competition to win a car, if you let go, you aren't out. The gift of grace is a gift that keeps on giving. If you let go of the car because the going gets tough, God doesn't close the door. God doesn't take you out of the running. This is the gift of grace and this is the role of choice. God has given us the freedom to choose. This is why Doctrine 9 becomes a little difficult to follow after a bit. Not too far. Jesus' love is steadfast and will never fail. However, has created us with the freedom to love and respond to him, this freedom to live by grace includes the freedom to turn away. 
When does the choice of continued obedient faith in Christ, what does the choice of continued obedient faith in Christ look like? Well, it's connection. It's relationship. Our relationship with God needs ongoing care, attention, trust and communication. I have a um, stomach condition which means I don't absorb micronutrients. What that means is that I will forever need to take vitamins and a whole heap of vitamins. And if I don't take these vitamins, I feel tired. Um, my hair breaks and sometimes falls out. It's fabulous. Um, I feel just lethargic and icky. And I know when I have and haven't stuck to taking my vitamins. However, does that mean I am very good at taking my vitamins? It does not. I know that I need to take them. I know that it is good for me. I know that it is going to sustain me. And yet, I'm shocking. Whether it's a break in routine, whether it's because I go away for a trip and I forget to take them with me and then when I come home I forget to take them again. It might be that life has just gotten too busy and all of a sudden I'm rushing out the door and my routine again out the window. Even though I know that taking vitamins is really good for me and it's something that I have to do to stay well, I'm still not very good at doing it. This is similar to that dependent continuance. It is an ideal. It is the best way. However, life can get in the way. And all of a sudden, our hand slips and that state of obedience gets a little slippery. Where we really find ourselves in trouble is when you forget to pray, forget to read your Bible, participating in a Sabbath routine, forget to worship, tell a little white lie. I was just a little gossipy. And somehow it gets to the point where we don't even try to obey God anymore and our hand has let go of the car. That's when we have a problem. We must honestly ask ourselves whether our disobedience comes from a heart that has hardened towards God. Deliberate, ongoing disobedience can result in a loss of connection with Christ. This is when it becomes difficult to raise that weary arm again and reach out for connection. It's when we forget why we were hanging on in the first place. Pain can have this effect on us. People can reject or drift away from God when they experience pain and disappointment, rejection and persecution. That's when it gets hard to hold on. As you are aware, just over a week ago, I participated in a 35-kilometre walk along the Fleury Peninsula. Gosh, that's a beautiful piece of South Australia, can I tell you? We got to walk along these cliffs and it was absolutely amazing. For those of you who know, my preparation leading into this walk wasn't ideal. I participated in another walk about uh, three months ago and hurt my knee and have spent the three months trying to recover and get ready for this walk. So I knew going into it that it was a bit risky, that my body probably wasn't ready for it, but I did it anyway. At about the 15 kilometre mark, we had to slide down these rocks and I did that really well. What didn't work so well was getting up after I slid down the slimy rocks and I felt my knee go. And I honestly, the face said it all and went, oh, 20 kilometres left. And my knee was not bending. I could see the next pit stop, which is where the 20 kilometre group was going to join us, because, you know, we chose 35. Um, role of choice there. Anyway, I could see the next pit stop, and I knew that 500 metres after the next pit stop, we had to climb the bluff, for those of you who know what that is. So in that moment, I was in quite a bit of pain. I had to walk down this thing without bending my knee and walk up this thing without bending my knee and then do the bluff and then walk another 20 kilometres with a knee that wasn't bending. And I stopped for that moment and I had a choice to make. I could push through the pain, climb the bluff and be out of the race. Or... I could choose for just a minute to rest, 
I could choose to look after myself and acknowledge that there was pain and that I was weary and that I was tired. And I made the choice not to do the bluff. I sat out for 45 minutes or an hour while my teammates did that part and joined them again and was able to do the final 20 kilometres without bending my knee, I might add, um, which made me look a little like Forrest Gump for most of the walk. But I chose to rest. I chose to acknowledge the pain but still hold on to the hope of continuing. Life is like this. Continuance in a state of obedient faith might mean acknowledging that there is pain. It might mean taking a rest, relying on those around you, asking for help to even remember why you were doing it in the first place. You were connected to God. You had faith for a reason. It might mean stopping and remembering why. What do we know? We know that Jesus knows what pain and suffering is like in Hebrews 2.18. We know that God is present with us in our pain as our comforter and refuge, Psalm 46.1. Christians can expect trouble in this world. We are not immune to pain, John 16.33. We know that our character can be improved through suffering. It really isn't a great thing, but it is true. <laughs> Hebrews 12.7. And we know that in the new heaven and the new earth, God will wipe every tear from our eye. Revelation 21, 1 to 4. Continuing to stay connected and not letting go means choosing faith even through the pain. It means when you are in a competition to win the car, having someone hold your finger to the car when the cramps come. It means sitting on the floor while you take a rest, even if it means you are looking tired and it means acknowledging that it isn't easy to remain in the race. You may be wondering, this is a really nice rhetoric, Erica, but is there actually scripture to underpin everything that you're saying? Well, yes, there is, thank goodness. And we heard part of it this morning already, and that is John 15, 1 to 5. Would someone be willing to read that? Now, this could be a test for those of you who come to Messy Church. What is the fruit? We've been doing it lately. Joy, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Choosing to trust and obey even when the going is tough is choosing to remain in Christ. Choosing to remain connected to the vine, and in doing so, producing fruit. That will be joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Just like taking my vitamins will produce all that I need to stay healthy in my body, choosing to remain in Christ will produce all you need to stay healthy spiritually. If you take your hand off, if you choose to discontinue in your obedience in faith, it is so much harder to stand up and put your hand back on. That's where the struggle is. It's not impossible, but it's harder. Can someone read this one for me? Not only shall we choose to continue to stay connected, let us choose to uphold each other in the journey to stay connected. Choosing obedience and trusting God is a choice, but so is the choice to hold each other. Two final images, one for me and one that this reminded me of. 
On the walk that I did, I had the benefit of journeying with some other women who were there to walk with me and continue to walk with me even when I was in pain. I wasn't left to deal with the pain on my own. I think there may have been a couple of moments, but they chose to stay with me in the end. I wasn't judged when I needed to sit down for a minute and take a rest. They didn't snicker that I hadn't made it as good as them. They chose to journey with me through the pain. Which reminded me of this story in the Bible. It's jumping all over the place. Exodus 17. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Not only is continuance in a state of salvation and obedience a choice, so is our judgment of others who struggle to hold on. You have a choice to help hold each other up or we can choose to turn away from those who are struggling. Doctrine 9 leaves us with a lot of choice. We can choose the right way or the wrong way. The choice is to hold fast to God even in the tough moments and we can choose to uphold those who are struggling to remain. The grace of God is a gift one that we have to choose, both as a holder and as a supporter. What is your choice? Ask yourself, what can you do to make sure you remain? And what can you do to uphold those in the midst of the struggle? When you think about your choice, maybe also take a moment to think about who around you might need your support and not your judgment as they too struggle to hold tight. Whether it's the image of remaining someone holding tight to the prize of winning that car, the loss of routine, and even though, like vitamins, you know what's good for you, you are struggling to do those things you know you need to do to stay well and connected, or you are in pain and you're unsure how you're going to finish the walk, take comfort in knowing that even if you let go, you are not out of the race. The grace of God takes care of that. However, it is harder to reconnect if you let go. So do all that you can to hold on. The benefit of Doctrine 9 is that you know It's not something that just happens to you. It's not something that you have no control of. It is a choice. If you are taking your hand off the car because no one is looking, if you're skipping your spiritual vitamins because no one sees you doing it, stop. Wrong way. Go back. Once you head down the wrong road, it's really hard to turn around. Acknowledge the difficulties, acknowledge the pain, the shortcomings, and allow God's grace to do the heavy lifting. Stop. Wrong way. The road isn't closed. God's grace means that it will always remain open to you. We are going to sing in a moment, and it is um, about that choice. Today I want to leave you with a couple of questions. Are you holding on? Or is your hands getting just a little bit sweaty and they're starting to slip? Are you guilty of watching someone slip and rather than holding tight to them, turning away? Are you letting those little slips, just a little white lie, No one knows that I haven't picked up my Bible for three weeks. You are not out of the running. God's grace ensures that. But you have to choose to hold on. You have to choose to remain. And you have to choose to support those who are also struggling 
to hold tight. The song we are singing, if we can have the words up. When I look into your loveliness, when I look into your, when I gaze into your, when I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you, I found the joy of reaching your heart when my will becomes enthroned in your love, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you. That is what continuance and holding on looks like. When all the rest, the routine, the busyness, the craziness, the pain become shadows because you are so tightly held by God. Where are you? Is there a big sign saying, wrong way, turn back? Make that choice today. We are going to sing that again, but first let's share in a prayer. Lord God, I often wonder if it would be much easier if choice wasn't a part of the equation. However, what a beautiful gift you have given us to choose relationship with you. So, Lord, today I pray for all my friends here in person and those online. Lord, I pray if their hands are getting sweaty, if they're experiencing pain and discomfort, and they're struggling to hold on in that continuance of obedience, if they're struggling to remain, Lord, I pray that they experience a peace beyond all understanding to know the reason why there was faith in the first place. And Lord, if there are those around us who we can see struggling, give us all we need to hold up their hands, to put our hand around their hand as they remain in the vine. So Lord, whatever it is that we need, whether it's the courage to acknowledge that we've headed down the wrong way and we need to turn back, whether it's the courage to ask for forgiveness for doing things because no one else sees us, whether it's the courage to be with someone and say, I can see that you're doing it tough and I just want to work, walk with you in this. Lord, reveal to us what it is that you are telling us right now because you are a God that speaks, not just in the past but in the present and ongoing. When we are connected to you, Lord, we can hear you, be directed by you and remain in you. We pray these things in your precious name. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing this song again before our final song for the day. Please stand.
do you choose that the reason you live is to worship? A question. Our final song today is one that has been around, I'm pretty sure, forever. And it is in the final, there are four verses, and it is in the fourth verse, there's the reason that I actually chose this song. When I survey the wondrous cross, you know this. But in the, in the final verse, verse four, it says, where the whole realm of nature sing, that were a present far too small, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. That is the remaining. That is the choice of continuing obedient faith in Christ. What a force we can be if that is the choice that we make for God. So we are going to sing all four. I was trying to figure it out, but no, we're just going to sing all four. And when we get to that final fourth one, I ask you, the doctrines underpin our statements of, they are our statements of faith. Can this be a declaration of your statement of faith? Demands my soul, my life, my all. Can we raise our hands and say, yeah, we're in. Let's sing all four verses. Sorry, band. And a benediction. Go now and love one another because love is from God. Proclaim God's salvation to every generation. Remain in Jesus Christ and like branches of a vine, draw your life from him. And may God the vine grower tend you and make you fruitful. 
May Christ Jesus abide in you and give you life. And may the Holy Spirit cast out all fear and fill you with God's love. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And everybody says, Amen. Thank you.